um, just done a slightly strange thing, which was to watch the beginning of the video that I recorded on um, the problem about four integers A, B, C, D. And at some point, I had a reaction which was, but don't stop there. You, 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 you were on the point of um, solving it with a solution that was neater than the one that I came up with. Um, I'm not absolutely certain that that's the case. So I'm going to check now. Um, I'd rather do it videoing myself checking than um, writing it down on a piece of paper and simply reporting on it. So just what was the point that suddenly made me think there might be a nicer solution? It was back here when I defined this number theta. So actually, perhaps I ought just to sort of remind, remind you what the problem was. So I want to show that for every positive integer, um, if a, B, C, D lie in increasing order strictly between n squared and n plus one squared, we can't have that A times D equals B times C. And um, so what I noticed was uh, when I was thinking about it first time round, was that if B over A equals D over C, then B minus A over A equals D minus C over C. But uh, B minus A and D minus, well, a is different from C, so therefore B minus A must be different from D minus C. And the thought that I've now had is that A and C are very close to each other, I mean, their ratio is very close to one, but B minus A and D minus C are much smaller integers, which should suggest that their ratio cannot be all that close to one. And I think that may actually just be enough to solve the problem. So let's just quickly check that. Um, so we say that if, I'll write it this way around, if B over A, uh, hang on, we have AD equals BC, yep, so uh, then B over A equals D over C, and therefore, b over a minus one equals d over c minus one. So that implies that uh, b minus a over a equals d minus c over c. And in fact, that's what I was just saying. That's not the most convenient uh, version of what I want to say, which is that uh, let's rearrange once more. c over a equals d minus c over B minus A. And uh, we can go even further. So my claim is going to be that because C and A both lie between N squared and N plus one squared, exclusive, uh, this ratio is very close to one. And I want this ratio not to be so close to one. Uh, so it makes sense to subtract one from both sides. I, I don't see it instantly in advance how that's gonna help algebraically, but it sort of, it surely should do. So subtracting one from this, that implies that C minus A over A equals, and this minus this, um, D minus C minus B plus A over B minus A. Uh, so what can we say about the left-hand side? Um, I want to argue that this is quite a lot smaller than this. Uh, so what is this? Perhaps I can even just, so this is, so the left-hand side is less than or equal to, uh, so C minus A, let's be, let's not worry too much about exactly how small C minus A, how big C minus A can be. We certainly know that it's at most n plus one squared minus n squared. And if we need a more accurate estimate later on, we'll go for that. So I could, I could improve this to sort of two n minus two or something probably. And then A is at least as big as, and again, in the same spirit, I'll say n squared, even though I could improve that to n squared plus one. Uh, and then if this turns out not to be enough, as I say, we'll go back and try and improve it. So the right-hand side, is greater than or equal to, um, well, we know it's not zero. So actually the modulus of the right-hand side, let's say, is greater than or equal to 
one over and then b minus a is um, at least so then plus one, which troublingly is not quite small enough. So I'm not quite big enough to be bigger than this. So this is sort of roughly two over n, and this is one over two n. And but unfortunately, those two statements seem to be extremely consistent with each other. Um, so that's a little bit annoying because it still feels as though this approach ought to work. Um, now, if I did take a lot more trouble with, actually, how, how small can D minus C minus B plus A B? So the difference between D and C and the difference between B and A. Um, and notice that actually, if this top thing is zero, we get, uh, a plus D minus B plus C. So it's the same sort of consideration that we had before, whether this thing was, oh, and actually come to think of it. Um, yeah, so if I could argue that this number had to be not just bigger than one, but bigger than something quite a bit bigger than one, like bigger than four or something. Maybe a bit more than that. Might be in good shape. Actually, that's rather surprising that this approach has not quite worked. So I've got the same sort of order of magnitude here of kind of one over n-ish, but there's this annoying constant two, and then here it's also one over n-ish but it wasn't quite good enough. And the previous approach with those calculations did seem to be okay. So I'm now feeling as though if I were to put in the effort to get this to work, I would find that um, I would in fact end up with calculations rather similar to the ones I did before, after all. Um, Although, yep, I am now not so confident that this approach works. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what's what's worth doing. Is it worth struggling with this? I thought I thought it was just going to come out straight away. If it doesn't come out straight away, then uh, it's not likely to be much of an advantage over the original approach. Um, but I'm still slightly can't quite believe that I haven't made a little bit of a mistake somewhere. Uh, nope, I don't see it, so I shall stop.